What if there is a shield that each of us can use to protect ourselves from big oppressive government that is out of control? Why are we not using it right now? How could we forget it exists? If you knew what it was, would you use it? In the U.S. government and the states, uh, there are typically three branches of government. Uh, the, the executive, which is the president, judicial, which are the judges and the judicial system, which are the courts, and the legislative, which is the House and the Senate. Checks and balances are limits on each branch of government to ensure that one branch doesn't overwhelm or overcome or become more powerful than the others so that one actually regulates the other two uh, in, in, in a round robin so that uh, no branch actually t can take over. These are protections that we have here uh, for the government. What protection do you have when all three branches of government team up and begin working against you? The legislature passes bills and the president signs the bills into law. The judicial branch always rules in favor of the new laws. This is exactly what has led to what we have today. They have been producing more laws that now restrict nearly every aspect of our lives. They have created a myriad of agencies that have their own rules, all of which you must obey or one of the dozens of law enforcement organizations they created will make you obey. What can you do? They now have laws that prohibit you from suing them. How are we the people ever going to stop it? The Founding Fathers knew full well how dangerous an out-of-control government can be. So they utilized the most powerful part of the system that would work continually to keep the government small and out of the way of the people. What is that most powerful part? You. I know what you're saying. You're saying, what? How can that be? If I've been the most powerful, then why does it seem that I'm powerless? And, and why did things get this way if I'm the most powerful? What do I do? Protesting is not working. We have more guns in this country than most countries put together. You don't mean we have to begin an armed revolt, do you? We have always had guns in this country, and that did not work and the government has guns too uh, and I'm not interested in getting killed thankfully for us all we have another peaceful way to do it we just forgot how you might ask how could we forget something so important well it was in the government's best interest to help it along and it happened over a long time the government had a plan and implemented that plan little by little and eventually there were so few that knew uh, they could do little to stop it. Many who did know weren't teaching and joined the government against the people. After 1861 some folks made some changes that would allow them to slowly make more changes and that let them get away with even more and more changes. 1913 was when the final keystone was put fully into place. Education. The government took over the schools so they could control what the teachers were teaching the students. And they soon phased out civics that included knowledge of their true power from elementary schools to colleges. News and media. Through the Federal Communication Commission, FCC, with the help of newspapers and broadcasters who got favorable treatment by the government, they made sure that our real power got very little mention. We have had several decades of television programming that rarely, if ever, showed the power being used, and over several generations, it was no longer a part of our normal society. Churches are now 501c3 nonprofit corporations granted nonprofit status by the government. And by holding that status hostage, they could put pressure on the churches to leave out a few important details out of their message to their congregations. Family. There's been a lot of pressure put on families, especially now that both parents work. 
They have no time to pass down their knowledge to their children, or even know what their children are not being taught in schools. The key to our power is there if you look, but we don't even know we should be looking and we don't have any examples, so we simply believe there's no way out of this mess. So what is it? Just little old you alone on a jury in a court of law. That's all. Through your power of jury nullification, which is part of the due process of law, you have the power to strike down or force changes to any law that you conscientiously have reasonable problems with. Of course, you need to know how that works by knowing how to be a juror, and they are not showing us that. They are not hiding it, though, and it's up to you to know. If more people knew how to be a juror, then the government would be much more careful about what they try to foist on us. More importantly, as a defendant in a criminal case, if you know this, then your peers must know this. And as a defendant, then you can demand that the jurors are educated to their duty to you as a defendant and to each and every one of us who are directly impacted by bad or poorly written laws. Do not forget the following. If you do not understand your rights or the law or due process of law and jury nullification, the prosecutor, the judge, the jury, and even your counsel slash attorney are not permitted by law to teach you this. Why? Because the law says ignorance of the law is no excuse. People who are ignorant cannot obey the law and they must suffer until they remedy their ignorance. Punishment or suffering is the correction for ignorance. As a defendant, it is not the law written by people that gets you into real trouble. It's your ignorance that gets you into real trouble. Just one juror can hang a jury. It is not easy standing your ground, but if you have reasonable objections to the law or statute as written, then you have a responsibility to yourself and everyone else in this country to not be pushed off your principle. Even if it results in a mistrial, and 12 other people in a new jury eventually act in opposition to your position, then you cannot be viewed as irresponsible. Don't be bullied. It is not a waste of money and time when you exercise your power and do what is right. This is how bad law is struck down or forces the legislature to rewrite, change, or get rid of bad law or statute. This principle is important to know whether you write the law or are subject to the law. This forgotten shield is what was lost, and things will not change until you change. This video is not here to teach you everything your shield can do. That's your job. This is only an introduction. I suggest a good start is the Citizens Rule Book Jury Handbook. Read it. Know it. It was common knowledge when the United States was born, and mention of it should have been included in the Fifth Amendment to the Constitution. We should require that every one of us on this planet know why it is right and just. This video is intended to do three things. One, to show you the shield exists. Two, to show you how easy it can be forgotten. Three, to provide you good reasons why you need to know this as fast as you can.